We have some bad news for you. This may be having negative effects on your health. Maybe it's time for some screen cleaning. family. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we do a little spring screen cleaning, you'll be alerted to it. That's a mouthful, right? But research conducted by organizations like Nielsen suggests that the average daily screen time for adults in the United States ranges from, get this, four to six hours a day. This includes time spent on your smartphone, your computer, your tablet, your television, and other electronic devices. So I always think it's interesting that, you know, once a week my iPad, my, my phone will tell me Reports. what is my screen time. And it used to be kind of like sad when I would see it went down because it, that, to me it would be telling me I didn't work enough. Mm, right? Wow. I, I didn't work enough. Why am I not? Because our job really does involve a lot of screen time. Yes. But now I'm always going, was I able to keep it low? Because if I kept it low or lower than usual, that means that I'm being productive in other areas and taking my eyes off the screen. And this is really important because screen time can have both direct and indirect effects on our weight loss efforts and our overall health. So let's get right into some of those effects that it can have. So number one, it can have some sedentary behavioral effects, okay? Excessive screen time often leads to a sedentary lifestyle where individuals spend prolonged periods of time sitting or lying down. That was our life. This lack of physical activity can contribute to weight gain or hinder weight loss efforts as it burns fewer calories compared to more active pursuits. That was what we were doing. We were living life on a couch, yep. in a bed, watching movies. It was like our sole date night activity was eating and watching movies. And that is really why like the mantra for both our channels, both Two Crazy Ketos and Two Crazy Campers is live life beyond the couch as you're taking back your health, get off the couch. Yeah. And we don't mean like lose the weight, get your health back and then get off the couch. If you get off the couch now in any way, it doesn't even have to be getting out and going to theme parks or going camping or any of that kind of stuff, but just doing something other than sitting on the couch watching TV. Makes it easier to do That will it. make it easier to have a, a better health. It'll make it easier to lose weight. It's so, so important to get off the couch. And I will be honest, and we are still guilty of this sometimes. There are definitely still some times where we're like, I just wanna do nothing but go lay on the bed and watch TV for a couple of hours. And that actually brings us to number two, which is increased snacking. I'm definitely guilty of that. Me too. I mean, people tend to snack mindlessly when they watch TV or they use their iPads, their iPhones, different things like that. And a lot of times this leads to much higher calorie and carb intake without even realizing we're doing it. And that could really sabotage our weight loss goals, especially if those snacks are high in total carbs, even if they're low in net carbs. And that is one of the reasons that we always say, Follow a total carb protocol because a lot of the snacks that we're going to eat, they're high in fat. They taste really good. We don't have a shut off valve for them. So we snack and snack and snack. And then before you know it, because a lot of times we're going net carbs only, we've eaten like 100 total carbs. And even worse, we've maybe eaten 50, 60, or 100 grams of fat because a lot of those snacks and desserts are high in fat. 
So now we're gonna talk about number three, which has also been an issue in this household, and that is disrupted sleep patterns. Exposure to screens, particularly before bedtime, can interfere with sleep quality and duration. And poor sleep is associated with weight gain and obesity due to disruptions in hormones that regulate appetite and metabolism. I'm guilty. We're I'm, all guilty. I, I'm I'm excessively guilty of this one. So I have a poor sleep routine. I try to work on it. The thing is, is no matter what I do, I tend to have a poor sleep routine. So if I don't do the screen, I'm usually doing something else. And I'm like, I need to get that done. And the next thing I know, I turn around, it's 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two in the morning. But I'm even more guilty of, I can't go from doing something to sleep. Right. I use the screen to help me go to Get sleep. Get tired. Which now keeps me up even longer. And now I'm not going to bed until 2.30, 3 o'clock, 4 a.m. There have been more than one occasion where I am going to sleep, turning off the television as Rachel is waking up at 5 a.m. And that's not something to celebrate because no, it's, it's, not. it's, it's really bad. And a lot of people are trying to eat for hormonal effects, right? They're worried about their hormones. Well, you could do your hormones a favor by turning off the television when you're sleeping. Number four, emotional eating. Hello. Excessive screen time especially when we spend it on social media, like Facebook, like um, Twitter X, uh, even our Mighty Networks group, sure. right? That can really harm us because many times we consume stressful content. Mm -hmm. And that stressful content can trigger emotional eating because it becomes a coping mechanism for our stress, for our boredom or even our anxiousness. And that then leads back to number two where we begin overeating and then we gain more weight. So next up is number five, which is reduced mindfulness. And this is kind of running through like a stream of all of these issues, right? Mindfulness is something that's very important. And when you're watching television, it leads to mindlessness eating, right? That's what we're talking about. So screen time often distracts people from being fully present during meals, leading to mindless eating and decreased awareness of hunger and fullness cues. And this can result in overeating and can really hinder your weight loss because you're just not thinking about, you're eating more than you realize, even at dinner time, right? If I'm watching a movie or I'm watching a show and let's say it's a 30 minute show and I'm watching it on my iPad or I'm watching it on television while I eat, let's say I am full and finished at the 18 minute mark, but the show's not over. So maybe I'm like, okay, well, I want to continue enjoying this show. I want to stay in this rested state. So I'm going to go back and get some more food so that I can finish my dinner, finish my meal with this show. But that can be a, a real mistake because you're consuming more than you're authentically hungry for. Okay. So I need to share something. Did that, I just step on a nerve right there? Well, I'm laughing. Okay. Because... Listen, this list is not a research list. This list is Us. everything that Joe and Rachel do, do wrong or has done wrong. Right. And I can remember several years ago. Okay. Like when we first started trying to lose weight. We were guilty of something like that. And sometimes we can still be guilty of that. And that is binge watching a show. Mm. I love to wait until the show is over or and there's a, a whole of lot of episodes and yeah. watch a ton of it. And then you really do like get mindless that what you're doing. And there was this amazing Korean drama. Yes. That we watched it's called Boys Over Flowers. Uh -huh. If you want to watch an amazing show, it it's is on Netflix, so I think. good. It's on Netflix. It's really enjoyable, very, very clean. Give it two episodes but first. But you get into it. Right. And then the episode ends and you're like, I need to see what happens next. And I don't, I want to say there's like 20 something episodes. Yeah. And they get longer and longer. They start off with the first few or 45 minutes and the last ones are like an hour and 20 minutes. We may or may not have binge watched the entire series without ever going to sleep. 
Yeah. So then you're like you're, talk about mindlessness. You're 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 when you eat is all jacked up because you're eating like feathered through stuff, and then yeah, you're not sleeping properly, so that's gonna jack up your your health results. So like yeah, it's it's definitely something that we struggle for. So now. We've talked about some things that can hurt you as far as screen time goes. What can we do? How can we mitigate the negative effects of screen time on weight loss and health momentum? Okay, so I'll give you one. Okay. We can limit our screen time. Yeah. And this is gonna be hard. We can't This do is it. very difficult for us because our job involves a screen. I have to edit videos. Rachel has to make content, you know. Our lives really do revolve around screens, not just ours, but most A people's, lot of people. right? I mean, what do we say all the time? Go Google it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like to read books. I will read my iPad. I mean, I, I study my Bible on the iPad instead of a book. Most of that is because of my eyesight and I can enlarge it. But still, if we limit our screen, screen time and we prioritize our physical activity, um, we can set boundaries on our screen use. We can incorporate regular exercise into our daily routine. And that could really counteract some of the sedentary behavior that we get when we're using screens. Well, and you can start small. You can be like, hey, I'm going to eat my meal and then go for a walk around the block to yep. just kind of like digest my food and you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling good and I'm just gonna walk a little bit. It's easy. Yep. So just to incorporate like a walk. In fact, we can actually start something now that we are definitely guilty of that would help limit screen time. And that is stop eating while you're watching TV. That's a good idea Sit too. down at the table and turn off the television. And then when you're done eating, you can return to the, the show that you're watching. Um, another thing is you can just decide, I'm gonna practice mindful eating. Pay attention to what and how much you eat, savoring each bite and listening to your body's hunger and fullness signals. Like just what you're saying though, kind of goes with that because it's hard to do that when you're trying to multitask. And, and that is something that is celebrated, multitasking. The thought, no such thing. The thought of multitasking is great. I love that. That that's like a buzzword that is very hard. I'm good at multitasking. To achieve, right? I'm concentrating on something more than I'm concentrating on the other tasks, though. That's the problem. And I want, if I want to concentrate on the eating task, then I need to probably shut off the television, shut off my screen time while I am eating. You know what I can multitask? I can listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video while I'm walking around the block. If I'm gonna multitask, don't make it a combination of screen time and food. You could make it a combination of screen time and I'm gonna put a puzzle together or screen time and I'm gonna fold the laundry or screen time and I'm gonna walk around the block because there's it's not so important what those two, th you know, those two things together. So I say it all the time. It usually enrages some people who become keyboard warriors that there is no such thing as multitasking. You cannot do more than one thing with the same exact quality at the same time. You're going to focus on one thing or the other. Folding laundry and watching TV. You cannot possibly be the most attentive watching TV and the most attentive folding laundry. You may be able to switch back and forth, right. but one of those activities will always suffer, even if it's a little bit. So if you're going to multitask, like you said, maybe it's fine. watch your screen or listen to your podcast while you're walking because it doesn't take any thought to walk other than put one foot in front of the other. Right. Be careful, don't get hit by a car, please. I mean, Stay I guess we sidewalk. should look at it that way. But when it comes to eating, let's be honest, I know I'm guilty of this. If I'm watching my screen, what am I focusing on? The screen. I'm focusing on the screen, which means I'm not focusing on what's going in my mouth. Not even mouth. enjoying it. So going back to what we said earlier, Turning off the screen when we eat will help us and we can stop saying we're multitasking eating. Which one's the priority? The priority is the eating. So next one is gonna be, hard one for me, 
we need to establish a bedtime routine. And I've proven in this marriage it can be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. You've got to want it, right? But you can limit screen exposure before bedtime to improve sleep and quality of sleep and then support your weight management goals that way. And it really, I, I, the proof is in the pudding. It really has helped a lot that I can be more confident about my sleep. And, and that's something I've had to do without your permission. Like, even if your partner is not willing to make those changes, changes I make those changes like I, I now put on my pajamas at a certain time I start like winding down I use my vivo rays glasses to like help with like the lighting I start powering everything down so my body honestly starts to get tired just in the routine that I have before bedtime yeah we really need to and I need to work on a bedtime routine say like you know what at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock it probably should even be earlier I'm done working. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Whether it's done or not, listen, it could wait till tomorrow. Yes. But if I want to watch TV for an hour or two before I go to bed, that's fine. That means I should end my work earlier, maybe at 7 o'clock, and then say I'm going to watch TV till 9 and have that routine that I'm going to do every single day. And one thing that really can help with that is what you mentioned is your Vivaray glasses. This is not a sponsored video, no. but we love our Vivaray glasses. We, you know, wearing different shaded glasses at different times of the day will really help. Something that we didn't mention in the earlier list is the blue light itself from the screens impact us negatively and it actually keeps us awake because we're exposing our body to these blue lights and we don't even know what LED lights do to there's not enough no. research because they haven't been around long but our body thinks it's awake it thinks it's daytime when you have all of these lights on at night it still thinks it's daytime so a good rule of thumb is when you're looking at a screen wear glasses that block out the blue light that helps your body in itself the other thing that you need to do is get the orange and the red glasses. That's why we like our Viva Rays, because it comes with all three. Then, so when the sun goes down, you put the orange lens on. Because now what you're doing is you're basically simulating to our body, okay, the sun has gone down. Now we're going by fire, right? right. Or candlelight. Because, and so it helps our body and our mind to wind down. And then about an hour before we go to bed, you switch over to the red glasses because now it's nighttime. And it is amazing when I'm actively doing that and I'm remembering to do that, I fall asleep out. like one, two, three. But the problem is, is like we said, those screens really can mess with us and mess with our whole circadian rhythm in telling us this. So having that routine of at this time I put on my glasses, at this time I switch to this one, that can really help us with limiting the screen time. So the last one is gonna be, we need to find alternative activities. So if we engage in hobbies and activities that don't involve screens, like reading, uh, not on an iPad, uh, gardening, yes. spending time outdoors, uh, that can reduce our reliance on electronic devices. And this is something that I have noticed for myself. So one of my hobbies, is 3D printing. Yes, it which is. Which does not involve screen time. And it's nice to see you get excited about something. Yep. Like, and it, it, so it's not just like you're exchanging watching television for like hard work, no, like hard it's labor. it's fun, right? but it gets me off of the screen. And then many times I will do that and I will do it until I'm so tired that I just go to bed. So that is our list of different reasons why the screens can impact our health in a negative way and also what we can do to fix it. Let us know down in the comment section, do you have any other things that we can bring up? What are some different struggles that you have when it comes to looking at screens? Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take the most recent video that I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.